Visit Sayerite.com for all your project supplies, tools, and instructions. In this video tutorial, we're going to show you how to make a large softbox for photography and videography. We'll be making two 8 foot by 8 foot panels to make it 8 by 16 foot. Make it yourself and save. Each softbox that's 8 foot by 8 foot cost around $400. Hi, Eric Grant from Sayerite. We're building a softbox for our new studio. This is very crudely made. We need to take measurements so that we can cover it in a fabric available from Sayerite and use a white fabric uh, for the lights that will be installed inside. So for the top black cover, I need to just take a few measurements of our overall size. This measurement is eight foot. Yeah, this is 99 inches actually. And then if I measure the height to the floor, I get 16 inches. So we're gonna make one continuous piece of fabric that goes over it and we'll make pleats at the corners and staple it to the bottom. So first we need to sew our black fabric together to accommodate this size. The wooden frame is crudely made, but this softbox actually works quite well. One softbox this size purchased online can cost you upwards of $4,000. Obviously that does not include the cost of the lights. So this is our box, 99 inches by 96. We're gonna take the larger of it because it's basically a square by two inches it's not, by 16 high. So 99 plus 16 plus another 16. 99 plus 16 plus 16 plus about eight extra inches so that we can wrap around the bottom the staple. So I need about 139 inches by 139 inches. My fabric is 60 inches. I'm going to divide this by 59 to account for seam allowance. And that means I need 2.35 uh, number of panels sewing together and each panel is about 139 inches. My table is 72 inches but I have a tape measure on the edge and so that I can keep the roll on the table without having to go to the floor. I'm just going to put a piece of tape at 60 inches and mark where 60 inches falls, which is right there. So with the fabric at the edge of the table, I can come over here and mark where 60 inches is and then roll this to the edge of the table because we need to cut this fabric in half. And the mark's at the edge of the table and I now know that this is 120 inches. This is our second mark that it equals 120. We'll move it to the end of the table and then measure out 19 inches for a total of 139 inches for this panel. I'm going to take a T-square and mark the fabric so I can cut it. I'm just going to cut it with scissors because I don't need to worry about unraveling. It's just going to be stapled to the uh, wood frame. This HP uh, fabric has a shiny side on the uh, wrong side and a dull side on the top. This will be the outside and this will be the inside of our box. We're going to put double sided tape, seam stick for canvas, 3 8 inch, along one of the edges of these panels so that we can base the other panel to it. Notice how I don't have to work on the floor with uh, this table that's 72 inches wide and uh, about four feet uh, the other direction. Um, I always just move things around like this, which makes it really easy. So I've positioned my other panel on top now. Outside surfaces will face each other, so the dull sides face each other. The shiny side is up on this one, the shiny side's down on that one. We're gonna peel off the transfer paper, revealing the glue, and I usually go down the length of the table to about right there. Then I'll take this top panel and I will move it so that it's flush with that edge and very close to being flush with this end. Not that that's too important because it is going to be cut down. So watch what I do. This edge should be nice and flush. So now this is flush and I just based it down. When I reach this other end, watch what we do. Now to make sure it sticks, I'm going to put some pressure over top of the glue. Okay, and then I just move it down and continue basting. So I'll peel up this double-sided tape. 
and continue basting down the line until I reach the end. So this is the edge we just basted together and I'm going to sew approximately a half inch from the edge so I'm going to just put a magnetic guide on here and I'm going to do a six millimeter straight stitch and I can use V69 polyester thread or nylon thread because this is indoor or even V92 if you have it but uh, I, I prefer the 69 and this is easy fabric to sew with a home sewing machine I did a little reversing at the beginning and all you got to do is just sew down one edge We're coming to the end now, and t you could do a top stitch on this, but there's really no need. Again, it's just a soft box, so I did a little reversing there. So now we're putting basting tape on this other edge to baste the uh, third panel to it. Now this third panel is smaller in width um, because of the fact that I've made two soft boxes. So uh, this is how much I have left over, which is plenty. So we're gonna baste this in the same manner that we did the first panel. So I'm just basting on this uh, small piece to accommodate the size. Out, outside surfaces are facing each other and we're just gonna sew down this edge just like we did the first. There's no reason to show all of this. When we're done with this, we're gonna take it in and lay it on top of our light box to figure out the pleating at the corners, which is easy. This is the wrong side of our fabric. You can see the seam allowance here. We did no top stitch and we've laid it over the frame. And seams are fairly parallel here. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to put a staple in each of the four corners so that I could draw it fairly tight. So there's my wood. And I'm gonna hold the stapler slightly crooked. That way I can pull the staple out because we'll need to pull it out to get the pleats. So I want to pull this fairly taut because there's a staple over there. So we're fighting against the staple so the fabric's pulled nice. Again, I'm going to go slightly crooked and uh, put a staple in there. And then we're going to do the same thing on the other two corners to draw it tight. Okay, so now we're going to do this to all the corners. We're going to create a pleat and it's pretty easy to do. What you want to do is you want to take in the excess fabric at that corner. So see how that fabric creates a triangle? We're going to mark there and on the other side of the triangle and then we're going to draw up the fabric to the bottom so it's basically coming straight down the side coming to the bottom edge and tucked up against the uh, wood so right here is my corner so I'm going to mark right there that's my bottom edge and then on this side turn it around so you can kind of see it here's my bottom edge here and there's the corner here so we want to mark up here okay so that there'll basically be a line from from edge to edge now we can cut off this excess fabric leaving about an inch or so you won't need a whole inch but that's excess fabric and then i'll just cut it off to the edge here and here and we're going to do that at every corner so see as you can see once it's sewn from mark to mark it'll be a perfectly formed cover so we're gonna do that at all four corners. We're gonna remove these staples. We put them at an angle like this so they're easy to remove. So we can take this to the sewing machine and sew the pleats at the corners. So here's our corner. And you can see the marks that we marked. I'm gonna take a clear acrylic ruler and I'm going to place it over top of the mark at a half inch and a half inch there. And then I'm going to strike a line going all the way down the edge of the fabric. So that line is a half inch from those marks. And I'm going to do the same thing over here, half inch and a half inch and strike a line. 
Okay, so now I'm going to cut this excess fabric away here on that line that we just struck or close to that line. Now we can just put basting tape on one of these sides, it doesn't matter which, um, close to the raw edge that we just cut. And we can peel off the transfer paper, revealing the glue. And what we'll do, this is the outside surface, is we're going to fold this uh, so that the outside surfaces are facing each other. And now that we have a cut edge that's perfectly neat, we just basically fold it in half and match up the edges and baste there. Now you could also use a stapler or pins if you don't have the double-sided tape. Now we're a little bit off there, so that's the nice thing about the double-sided tape is you can peel it up and you can fix inconsistencies. There we go, that's perfect. Now we're going to do this to all four corners. And since we're going to be taking a large piece of fabric to the sewing machine, I'm going to staple it here, here, and here as well. What this does is just make sure that when we're moving this around, it doesn't come unbasted. Now we'll do that to all four, all the three other corners. So here's what that pleat looks like. It comes up here to the corner here, and we're just going to sew a half inch from this edge, from this corner, and we're going to do a little bit of reversing here. This is the top. Just make sure your fabric is not folded into the top, and you're fine. So we're going to put it underneath there, and we'll sew a little bit in forward, and then we'll sew in reverse to lock our stitch in place all the way basically off the edge of the fabric. And then just sew a half inch down that edge till you reach the bottom. Now the bottom is going to have too much fabric, but uh, we'll show you what we do when we lay that back on the box. So I'm not even going to do any reversing here at the bottom. And we'll do this to all four corners. We've put it on uh, some tables here so that we don't have to work on the floor. And now that the cover's done, we just need to go and uh, put it on so that the, the same corner that we marked is at the corner of the wood here. So that corner is on, and we'll probably go to the adjacent corner, 45 degrees, and put it on. So one of the things I like to do just to draw the fabric tight on the top is to pull it snugly. And I'm actually going to hold the staple gun flat and put a couple staples on this end so that we can make sure it's drawn down nice and tight. So I'll probably do three on each side. Once this side's done, I'm going to go directly across and pull it snugly in place. So we'll start at the middle here. And then we'll do the same thing on the ends. We've turned it upside down, we didn't show that. And we're going to staple this bottom edge. This is all excess fabric. We want to start in the middle on one side and pull it taut and wrap it around the board. Staple it there. Pull it taut here. Wrap it around the board. I'm just going to do three staples on each side, then I'll probably do more. We have to secure hook and loop as well. So the three staples on this side, now we're going to go directly to that side and pull it tight and do the exact same thing. So I've put staples all around the perimeter about every foot or so. What I want to do is to draw the fabric tight and then put a staple about every 8 to 12 inches with the fabric drawn up tight. And then when you get to the corner here, we'll pull the fabric up like this and around, put a staple there, tightens it up. At the corner, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut down, basically following my seam to almost where the wood is. And then we're going to cut this off very close to the wood. So we'll do that here as well. We're going to follow that seam, leaving a little tab, cut that off like that, and that leaves us a little tail, if you will. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull on this and look for 
to get my fabric to look good at the corner, I'm going to staple here, and then I'm going to pull it around here, staple here, and then I'll just pull this tab, secure it down, and then cut off the excess. And we're going to do this to, to all the corners, and we're going to cut away the excess fabric. Okay, so now I have hook black, and I'm going to staple this around the perimeter. What I like to do is I like to put one staple in and go all the way to the other side. That way I don't have to position it and uh, pull it snug. Put a staple on that end, then cut off the excess, and we'll do this to all the sides and over in between. We'll just put a staple, probably going this direction to be better, about every three to four inches. So what I want to do now is I want to measure each side. This is 97 and write it down um, because I need to make my white uh, 200D uh, nylon fabric to exact size. So we're gonna measure each side. For the nylon 200D optic white, what we wanna do is we wanna create a square, it's basically a square, that is uh, 97 by 99. And I like to have extra fabric, so I added three inches. So I, it's a 60 inch wide fabric, minus one inch for seam allowance, 59, 102 divided by 59 means I need 1.72 panels, so that's two panels. 102 times two is 204, 204 divided by 36, I need 5.66 yards. We're cutting uh, our 200D nylon to size. Okay, this time I'm using a quarter inch basting tape. You could just use a 3 8 inch here because uh, we are going to sew a half inch um, inside this edge. And I'm going to put it on one of these panels, and there is no right side or wrong side to the 200D nylon. Once I reach the end, I'm going to pull the panels like I showed you before, so we can base the remainder part on a table. We're going to peel the transfer paper up, revealing the glue. And I go usually to the end of the table, and then I match up this panel edge with this one. Now it's not cut to the complete size yet, so it's a little bit uh, big. So we just match up the edges and baste without pulling on one more than the other. Nice and smooth. We'll do that all the way down this length. I'm going to back off the main upper tension because this is a very light fabric and we're sewing with a, uh, a V46 or you could sew with a V69 thread, nylon or polyester. And again, I'm not going to do any reversing and I am going to sew a few inches to check my stitch. And I'm sewing a half inch from the edge that we just basted. So I'm going to bury my needle and I'm going to make sure that I don't have too much upper tension, which I do. So I'm going to back it off a little bit more. You want just enough tension uh, to create a fairly good stitch on the bottom. I'd actually like to see my knot on the bottom side more than I would on the top. That way the fabric doesn't pucker much. I still see my knot, so I'm going to back this off a little bit more even. There, that's perfect. So now we just want to sew. So what I'm doing is I'm stapling this in place in just a few spots and tacking it. So in other words, I'm holding the staple gun diagonally so I can easily pull out the staples. That way we know exactly where to cut it. So here I'm going to pull it against the staple that I put in the middle. I put the seam in the middle. We'll tack it here and come around and start tacking the corners 
So basically just at the corners and in the middle, and probably in the middle here is where I'll tack it. We ended up putting a staple uh, in four spots, including the corner on each side, just to draw it up nice and tight. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna use a uh, fabric marking pencil and mark the edge where the wood falls at about uh, four spots on each side so that I know exactly where this hem will be drawn to. And then we know it'll fit perfectly. So we're gonna do this all around the perimeter. So now we're gonna cut away this excess, leaving it at least an, leaving approximately an inch. And I'm gonna go fairly slow here. And I'm just guessing at approximately an inch because we're gonna fold this under. I marked A here and then I lifted it up and marked an A here so I know what corner goes where. And then we're just gonna remove these staples so that we can create our hem and sew on our loop. This is the uh, wrong side of the fabric and I'm gonna put my double-sided tape uh, about a quarter inch from the cut edge and it's about a quarter inch from our yellow lines that I can see through on the underside. So the hem is facing up right now. You can see that right here. See the hem's facing up. And we're gonna put this double-sided tape all around the perimeter. We're gonna peel off the transfer paper. Now we have those yellow lines and we're basically just gonna fold to those lines uh, that we've marked all around the perimeter. And it doesn't really matter if this isn't um, cut perfectly straight. In the end, it just, it's not gonna be noticeable. I guess if you wanted to be perfectly straight, you could, you could use a straight edge and strike on the lines and then cut an exact inch away if you'd like. But you'll see what I mean when we're done. This is looped um, fastener and we are going to put the double side tape in the middle of it and then we're going to baste it to the um, 200D nylon. We're going to peel off the transfer paper and we are going to baste this right to the edge, uh, the folded edge that is. And we might even trim off some of this, but I doubt it if it has excess. So we're going to go all the way around the perimeter and at each corner we're going to cut it and start again going uh, perpendicular to the whatever edge we just basted. I'm going to sew here and here. So I'm going to put a magnetic guide right up against the presser foot and we are going to sew a straight stitch and I'll do a little bit of reversing here at the beginning. Okay, when we get close to the corner, what I'm gonna do is bury my needle at the pivot point right there, lift my presser foot, roll around, lower my presser foot, and continue to sew down the next side. Okay, so now we've gone around the outside perimeter, and I'm just gonna start right here at the corner and bury my needle and do a little bit of reversing. This time I'm just going to use the uh, inside left edge of the uh, presser foot, the center foot, as a guide. And we're going to sew all around the perimeter on this side. So we wired uh, these quasar lights and used hook and loop and attached them to our boards. And now when I plug them in, there we go. Now we're installing the 200D nylon and it is best to have a second helper do this so you can stretch it across and we'll show you what it looks like when we have it installed completely. We used the white loop on the 200D nylon fabric and the black hook on the actual soft box wooden frame. Because we have a hook and loop system, you can easily gain access to your light panels inside. 
At the corners, we used lag eye screws and we used the wire rope clamp eighth inch. For the wire rope, we used the seven by seven eighth inch wire rope that's available from Sayerite and strung it all the way to the ceiling. We made two of these eight by eight large soft boxes and they are complete. Coming up next is the materials and tools list. The quantities shown in yellow are the amount of materials that was required to make one 8x8 soft box. The cost for those materials shown in yellow is less than $300. The cost for the wood, about $67. If you have any questions about the materials or the tools that we use, be sure to give us a call or email us. We're glad to help. I'm Eric Grant, and from all of us here at Sayerite, thanks for watching.